he is known for his achievements as an architect and artist. He honed his skills in etching, drawing, and painting under renowned instructors. His name is Ludwig Messler. In the early 20th century, a young artist and musician emerged from the vibrant city of Vienna. Ludwig Messler, born on August 25, 1891, was the son of Joseph and Jenny Messler. His father was a choir singer in the prestigious Imperial Opera House, where he sang alongside the legendary Gustav Mahler. With music and art running through his veins, Messler's passion for both disciplines grew as he blossomed into a talented young man. After completing his education at Real School in 1910, Messler followed his parents' wishes and pursued professional training. He enrolled at Technische Universität Wien and graduated in 1916 as an engineer architect, equivalent to a Master's of Architecture. Following three years of military service, where he rose to the rank of first lieutenant engineer, Messler embarked on a successful career as a professional engineer. His pay increased from $19 a week to $80 a week, showcasing his dedication and expertise in his field. However, life took an unexpected turn for Messler. In 1923, he immigrated to the United States, leaving behind his homeland and everything he knew. Settling in New York, he became a registered architect in the state in 1927. That same year, he married Wilma Allerhand, but their marriage faced challenges and ultimately ended in 1934. The Great Depression hit shortly after, making it difficult for Messler to find employment as an architect. It was during this time of uncertainty that he decided to follow his true passion and dedicate himself exclusively to art. Becoming a U.S. citizen in 1931, Messler returned to Austria, where he believed his savings would last longer. Back in his homeland, he immersed himself in the study of etching, drawing, and painting. Under the guidance of renowned artists such as Arthur Ponzin and Karl Starer, Messler honed his skills and produced numerous sketches, watercolors, and etchings. His talent and hard work paid off when his etching titled, A View of Sievering, gained recognition and was included in the fourth international exhibition of etching and engraving at the Chicago Art Institute. As the dark cloud of Hitler's rise to power loomed over Austria, Messler made the difficult decision to return to the United States. Settling in the Boston area, he fully dedicated himself to his art. This period marked the development of his highly individualistic parallel stroke technique in watercolor. Messler's work gained attention and was showcased in various art exhibits, including two one-man shows at the Worcester Art Museum in 1939 and Boston Symphony Hall in 1941. His etchings were purchased by leading museums and private collectors, solidifying his place in the art world. Despite his artistic success, Messler faced financial hardships. His strong beliefs about the value of his artwork made it difficult for him to sell his pieces. He turned down offers, even rejecting a generous offer from the Boston Museum of Fine Arts. To sustain himself, Messler found temporary employment through the WPA Art Project. Sadly, when the project ended, illness struck, and Messler found himself relying on charity for the first time. Great pleasure, Matisse has great maturity, and the temper of the eternal pupil, he is always willing to learn anyhow, anywhere, and from anyone. Leo Stein, Appreciation, Painting, poetry, and prose. This sentence gives me great pleasure. To think that this was the attitude of one of the finest artists since the French Impressionist. I like it because it is my own attitude, only that I am no Matisse. Ludwig Messler 17. X. 1957 Ludwig Messler, a composer of great talent and passion, found immense joy in the words spoken about Matisse. He admired Matisse's ability to maintain a humble and curious mindset, always open to learning from anyone and anywhere. Messler recognized that such an attitude was crucial not only for artists but for individuals in all walks of life. While acknowledging that he himself was not on the same level as Matisse, Messler shared a similar attitude towards his own craft. Complicated life, we have allowed our life to become exceedingly complicated. But even now, it is still possible to find, here and there, an individual that loves simplicity and tries, whenever he can, to eliminate or reduce complicated and replace it with simple. This task in itself is complicated, or should I say, complex, and yet again simple because it means as often to avoid things, or methods, as to use other things or other methods. Ludwig Messler 15. 9, 1957 In another entry from his journal, Messler contemplates the complexity of modern life. He acknowledges that society has become entangled in unnecessary complications. However, he finds solace in the fact that there are still individuals who appreciate simplicity and actively seek to simplify their lives. Messler recognizes that this pursuit is not straightforward. It requires a delicate balance of avoiding certain things and embracing alternative methods. The composer's reflections reveal his belief in the power of simplicity and his own commitment to leading a less complicated existence.
Do you want to explore more composers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.